Hey, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Tamara with Luce Bianca Sound Healing and Meditation. Welcome back if you are already a follower, subscriber, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you'll stick around because we have some crazy energy coming up in April and I wanted to do a deep dive into what we can expect. There's a lot of astrological events happening in April and a full moon in Scorpio and things are just shifting a lot and i think we're all going to be feeling this intense energy and this transformation so i wanted to do a deep dive letting you know what exactly is happening astrologically astronomically and also i wanted to do um and a detailed reading with different oracle and tarot decks to figure out exactly where we're heading what exactly this transformation is what is the energy of the shift just so that we can gain some cl some clarity and figure out exactly what we can expect right so let's just dive in and see what's coming up in april so april alone the month of april the energy is all about transformation transformation about um finishing chapters and opening new doors and just receiving a big, big push from the universe to change direction or just really move forward in advance. So when that happens, we are feeling that solar energy that that in just fast movement forward, that's probably the best way I can explain it, just really feeling that push behind you so that you can start creating the changes necessary to transform into your higher self. Now, there will be a lot of changes and uh, it's part of the transformation. So if you have been closing some chapters, uh, you know, don't be surprised if um, a move will come up, you, an opportunity to move somewhere or a new job offer. Um, it could even be a career change to something that you would never expect, but that's where the universe is leading you to now. It could be the end of a relationship and it could feel almost like the chapter is ended, but you're not sure where this, you know, where your new story begins. And this is where patience comes in because everything that gets transformed, it has to be um, melted by that fire. And the fire here represents that uncomfortable feeling, that intense feeling, right? But you can't um, melt the ice that has been stagnant and stuck and keeping you in old toxic energy unless you feel the discomfort long enough and hard enough to want to separate from it. So that can also be um, a motivator to transform and move forward. So yes, there are moments during this month where we begin a cycle of feeling uncomfortable, maybe a lot of emotions rushing at us and changes and shifts. Um, and even though we may feel like we're not ready for it, trust that you have been training, you have been exposed to all the energy and the wisdom and the clarity that you need at this point so that you can move forward. And again, of course, because there's so many astronomical events and astrological events happening this month, um, I, it's definitely going to be adding to that intense energy that we'll be feeling. And it's all coming together for our highest good, it's just like the universe being a big brother, just literally taking us by the shoulders and saying, go, go. So we're not standing, we're not standing still anymore. We are not stuck. We are moving whether we like it or not. So this is our moment to really um, close up and come to terms with things and take care of uh, loose ends and washing our hands clean, moving forward and starting a new chapter. So let's talk a little bit about what is going on astrologically, what is affecting us, what is all this craziness going on. So first and foremost, of course, it's the um, solar eclipse that you may have already heard about and getting ready for. Maybe you got your cool little sun solar eclipse glasses things going on i don't know i'm in florida so we're not in the trajectory of the full solar eclipse um so we might see partial so write in the comments below where you are and if you think you are in the trajectory um so you'll be able to see experience the eclipse but anyways 
um, the solar eclipse is going to affect all of us, no matter where we are in the world, because that energy um, is affecting the entire Earth. OK, so it's happening on April 8th. And typically a solar eclipse is when you really take a look at your deepest emotions. Everything is coming to a head and we cannot ignore um, the shadows anymore. The shadows are here. The shadows must be worked with. The shadows must be our friend. We have to learn how to navigate those challenges and those uncomfortable feelings because, again, transformation is happening. In order to transform, we have to feel that heat a little bit. We have to stand in the fire so that we want, will want to move from that uncomfortable position into the best version of ourselves. A new enlightenment. It's almost like this veil is going to be lifted and we're going to be like, oh my gosh, yes, this is exactly the sign that we've been waiting for and the clarification that we need it in order to make the next step forward. There is another astronomical event happening. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but I strongly feel that this is going to be very impactful for the month of April. So every April there is um, the Lyrid shower. So the Lyrid's meteor shower is actually debris left over from the comet Thatcher. So Alfred E. Thatcher was the one who discovered this comet. I believe he um, was a resident of New York. And basically after studying this, um, this event, the this shower is when um, scientists and astronomers found the Thatcher Comet. And none of us have ever experienced or seen this comet. The comet is not going to be back until 22, 2278, I believe. But um, the debris that is left behind um, as the comet goes around, um, is actually one that comes back every single April. So every single April, we're actually experiencing the Lyrid meteor shower. So in ancient tribes and ancient belief, meteor showers were very auspicious signs, and they always represented some type of enlightenment that would be coming your way, and messages that the heavens, the divine God, the universe was sending you, like a physical reminder that you were about to transform. So again, that transformation keyword that you were about to shift and that um, very important things were about to happen. The Lyrid's meteor shower may also intensify our desires and inspiration and um, achievements. And we may also be feeling a little bit more inspired about how to make those dreams come true. So just like you wish on a star, the, the comet, um, the meteor shower is another way to tap into your wishes and make them known. So like, don't suppress what you're really wanting, write them down, talk about it with a trusted friend or start taking the next steps because this is the time. This is the period of time where everything is really working in your favor to push forward and make those dreams happen. The shower is going to be from April 15th through April 29th, which um, is in the same time frame where the full moon in Scorpio is going to happen on April 23rd. So let's go ahead and start talking about the full moon in Scorpio while we're at it. I don't do well in full moon in Scorpio. I'm just going to say it. My sign does not do well in full moon in Scorpio, but I'm going to go through it and it's going to be okay on April 23rd as we are getting this Scorpio energy that really is going to be ruling and really going to be felt, I think, two weeks, at least a week before the full moon and even a week after. So the Scorpio full moon energy is going to be intense. Scorpio is all about passion. Scorpio energy is all about um, just really being headstrong, uh, heat, intensity, and that fire that um, sparks inside of all of us. And it's a little bit forceful and it will make you stop and think about things that you have been ignoring for a while, whether that is a comfortable topic or not, you're going about, you're going to be facing it around the full moon. So Scorpio energy, 
the way I see it and the way I've experienced it is it gets under your skin and that doesn't have to be something bad. It may be exactly what we need. And since the entire universe is conspiring this April to push us and to move us, we are no longer staying still. Of course, the Scorpio energy is also going to be um, helping with that by telling us you are not running away from this anymore. This is something we need to look at. And that Scorpio energy is something that all of the signs are going to be affected. Some signs, again, like Capricorn, are going to be affected a little bit more. This is the month where emotional endurance really comes into play. Um, because of the Scorpio uh, full moon, we are going to be feeling just a lot of intense um, heat and, and shifts. And I would encourage all of us to find and prepare for it, um, a way to counteract that by doing some simple self-care rituals. It could be um, committing to taking a ritual bath once a week to kind of cleanse and reset and really um, feel the stagnant energy finally being released and calming the nervous system down. If you don't already have a meditation practice, um, start one this month. I think that'll come really handy. And if you already have one, you may want to ramp up your meditation, your breath work. A lot of our journaling, um, Scorpio does also intensify creative um, inspiration. So that might be also a tool that you can use uh, for your own good and for transitioning through these intense emotions this month. But if you thought that was going to be it for crazy things astrologically happening in April, no, there is one more. There is the Uranus-Jupiter conjunction happening in April. That means they're going to be in the same degree in the same zodiac sign. And the last time this happened was in 2011. And it happens every 14 years. So here we are. Now, whenever Jupiter and Uranus meet, there is a big spark, especially because Uranus governs electricity and sparks of inspiration and incredible downloads. And Jupiter is the planet that everything it touches it amplifies, right? Jupiter is the great magnifying glass to whatever's going on, whatever um, he touches, whatever it comes in contact with energetically, physically, astrologically, you name it. So for that, we may already be feeling the effect by feeling the sense of wanting to get liberated, seeking that freedom that we need, and maybe some spark of genius, um, new ideas coming from God only knows where, and just really tapping into that electric energy of the planet conjunction, just working together, just really connecting us more and more with that divine power and divine inspiration. Now, this meetup between these two planets is happening in the sign of Taurus. Now, Taurus is very much an earth sign, and it's all about the five uh, senses. It's about being in your physical body, very strong, very rooted. It is about foundation. So practices like um, chakra dancing or meditation and yoga um, are all going to be very good practices to get that energy um, just kind of flowing through and distributed throughout the entire body and put it to good use. Side note, if you are in the Tampa Bay area, I am doing an event. Um, I can put the link in the bio. Just saying, just saying, in case you want to come. But anyways, this is all happening in April. So yeah, there is a lot. There is a lot coming up. But this is not to get discouraged. It's actually just to get ready for it. It's just being clear on what's up ahead so that we don't freak out when we're feeling these intense pockets of energy and sudden sparks of inspiration and also challenges and some uncomfortable emotions coming up. This gives us an idea how everything is working for our highest good. It's sort of like a rite of passage and we have to go through these hoops of fire in order to come out on the other side to much better and bigger things. So in this particular card spread, I want to delve deep into the energies and astrological events and I have picked cards with very specific um, 
questions. So I start with the question, what are we leaving behind? What is something that is coming, is coming to an end and it is the end of a cycle and we are getting ready to um, tie loose ends and move on from it? So the card that um, came out for this one is Perpetua, She Who Aches. Now this card um, is pretty heavy. It's all about sadness, solitude, silence, and being withdrawn. And it seems to be exactly what many of us have experienced in the past months or maybe even years. And we're getting to this end of the cycle where we are finally towards the end of this isolation. So in this picture, you can see uh, Perpetua is in a snowy garden. Um, she is um, alone, just a magpie right there, but she's ignoring him because she can't see the offerings around her. She is consumed by sadness and by the pain. It could be that we've been separated from something or someone we love or separated from source. Many of us have been uh, disenchanted with the idea of the spiritual world and our own spirituality. We have been uh, yeah. questioning and um, trying to really figure out what is our relationship with the spiritual world? You know, what are these religious constraints that some of us have experienced? Or maybe on the opposite end, maybe we didn't really follow anything. We didn't really believe in anything. Yet we are now, we have been called to look at a higher perspective. Maybe there is something more. And that sometimes can be scary. That sometimes can be a... um a confusing time trying to find what spirituality or what course of action or what decision we need to make in our life so the good news is we are getting ready to break the cycle and move on so um this card as we are coming to the end of the cycle is telling us that we need uh to see the beauty around us okay so even though we've been in this um darkness in this isolation we can see the beauty in the quiet trees um you know we can find happiness in all moments in um friends um in our ability to create so it's time to break through sorrow friends it's time to complete that circle and move out of it it's not going to be winter forever the the ice is melting we are moving forward but next naturally if i um am asking what we're letting go of i also want to know what are we inviting in what are we starting what energy do we now need to take on in order to grow and thrive and move on and the card um, that answers this question is Manara. Manara is she who waits. It's all about patience, waiting, and determination. So even though the cycle of uh, stagnant energy and uh, isolation and that frozen gray uh, vibration is you know taken over for so long, um, it doesn't mean we need to be rushing into anything. We don't need to be bursting into this new phase, this new um, period of growth. In fact, we are being called to wait patiently. So this is all about trusting the value of waiting and understanding that by waiting and by staying in the stillness of our heart, we are making room for answers and clarity and dreams to come true. So right now it is a moment of, you know, looking forward. Yes, we are breaking the cycle, but we need to still be in that reverence, in that stillness, waiting for wisdom to guide us. So Manara um, is holding a butterfly. I love butterflies. It's um, It has a lot of meaning for me. And she's almost holding it as if she's gifting it to you. But in reality, it's almost like she's asking you, if you want it, you can take it. I'm not going to freely give it to you. So it's inviting you to take the time to go after your own butterfly, that own transformation that you're embarking on. 
So after this isolation, after this darkness and sorrow, now comes, you know, the the waiting period. So some of us are right on that phase, right on that ledge of waiting and, you know, just pa being patient and maybe even wrapping up some challenges that we've been having. So... Now that we are aware of the past, the cycles that are completed, and the energy that we are taking on right now, and the phase that we're about to enter, what is the next step? What is the first thing that we need to be aware of in order to start thriving in this new phase and um, move on and learn from the past? What is the next course of action? So the card that answers this question, the seer, is... Um, about seeing beyond the current situation. Um, I like to say that it's seeing with your third eye because it's all about intuition and using that inner wisdom and that inner knowing and to raising your vibration so that you can focus on things that really matter. So letting go of all those little petty things that have been holding us back for so long by looking at things from a higher perspective. So being a seer, um, I feel like everyone can be a seer. This doesn't have to be um, a, a role re reserved only for just certain people. Um, we can all practice becoming seers and we all have that ability within us. We just have to awaken it. So being a seer in this um, example is being able to channel information about what's occurring in our life, what we want to happen in our life. So this is not about you know, divining you know, or predicting the future, but it's about being able to use your intentions and intuition to create your future, to create the next step. So this is a time where we need to start using our intentions and our focus to create things that are higher vibrational. We need to really have a talk with ourselves and see what lower energies are holding us back. That could be social media, that could be a habit, an addiction, that could be gossiping, that could be being around people that are always negative, that could be um, refusing to leave a job or a relationship that is toxic. So the message of this card is as we are moving through April and we're experiencing this new shift and this uh, crazy intense energy, really we need to start working on our clairvoyant abilities, on our intuition, and move forward with spiritual purpose. For the next card, I wanted primarily to get a message in regards to the solar eclipse on April 8th and what we can expect energetically from this event. So from the Spirits of Aloha deck, we have this beautiful card, which is choose peace, be responsible for your serenity. So since we are relying heavily on intuition and we're going to be getting a lot of signs and symbols about the transformation happening, we are to enjoy any and all moments during the day and sort of create our own mental sanctuary. Bringing peace into our lives doesn't have to have, you know, some huge um, transformations or some huge events. We can create our own peace by doing random things. Like if you're making the bed in the morning, you can actually create a sanctuary where you're spending those few minutes in contemplation and trying to bring in highest um, vibrations into your day. So this is all coming to uh, point us in the direction of finding path to our inner peace let's now move on to the lyrid comet showers and for this deck i wanted to pull from the starseed oracle cards and the card that is appropriate for this message is we the hathors and this card symbolizes deep love mother's milk birth as a portal and this is about birth it's about um, new life. Again, we're going back to these themes of transformation. And this card reminds us that we are constantly in communication with the universe, with the cosmic force, with astronomy, with the celestial beings, and that everything that happens is always a message for us. So like I said earlier, meteor showers are... Um, 
thought and lead to be messages from the heavens and an omen of luck and blessings coming our way. And this is to be done in a very tender, loving way. Because again, we are going to probably feel some moments of discomfort when something uh, ends and we begin a new journey, especially if it's one that we are not familiar with. And it, it seems scary and it seems complicated. But this card is telling us that our journey here on earth, you know, is not always perfect in our eyes and it can be uncomfortable, but we are always provided for. Okay, so this is the sign from the meteor shower. You are always blessed. You're always provided for. Okay, so for the last card, I actually wanted to pull one card for the Uranus-Jupiter um, conjunction and the full moon in Scorpio. So like I said earlier, the Jupiter-Uranus um, con conjunction is um, amplifying feelings of emotions, of self-worth, inspiration, passion, heat, um, tempers, and just really sparking that electrical um, energy all throughout our being. So this is also represented by the radical self-acceptance card, which is all about being perceived the way you perceive others. So around this full moon, again, amplified by the Uranus Jupiter's Jupiter conjunction, um, we're going to really be thinking about the relationship that we have with ourselves. And the way we see ourselves is the way we also interact and see other people because the inner world reflects the outer world. So this is a time to practice what um, what we preach, but it's also a time to take a look at what is affecting us, the way we perceive others. You know, what what are we lacking or what are we um, thriving on that in turn makes us look at the world around us in a certain way? So radical self-acceptance is going to be about deep reflection and finding the solution within because this month is all about um, digging deeper into those shadows so shadow work is a must this month whether we like it or not it's definitely a, an opening door for that um, but we need to look at ourselves and be honest with ourselves what is it about us that you know we don't like that we want to change well why is that why do we want to change it? What is limiting or lingering beliefs and limitations that we're still holding on to? Um, what are we rejecting about ourselves? What story do we have about ourselves? Um, where did that story come from? Why are we so stuck on it? And because transformation is going to push us to take action, we need to figure out what is that one thing that we need to work on. You know, like, what is this thing that is stopping us from achieving our best version of ourselves? So meditation on all of this is going to allow this very strong energy to sort of flow through. So don't resist it. Radically accept the fact that it's time to meditate on this. And you can do this um, in all different ways. You can journal. Um, you can do it through movement to expel that, you know, overflowing energy and just meditate on the things that light you up and on the things that bring you down and start somewhere. Pick one thing that it's maybe just laying heavy and you need to change and you want to let go of so that you can finally go through this opening door and get the transformation that you need. As you do this, notice all energies and feelings and emotions that are coming up without judgment. Some of those emotions may, may not feel pretty, may not feel comfortable, but just be gentle and patient with yourself and know that this is all part of the course. So just breathe and allow the positive, the negative, the uncomfortable, the comfortable to just marinate your being and just remember to be kind and this is part of the healing process. This is the part where you can finally shift and change if you're willing and ready to undergo this transformation by digging into those shadows, figuring out what it is that needs to be addressed. So um, this is all about self-exploration and it's going to be a beautiful journey with all of its ups and downs, but we can definitely do it and we can definitely um, thrive and learn from it in fantastic ways.
So as you can see, April is going to be a month full of energies and changes, but together as a tribe, we can navigate them. Write in the comments if you feel that all of this is really aligned for you. And, you know, if you need a, a blessing or a form of encouragement, you can request that as well in the comments. Just know that all of this is happening and it's affecting everyone to some degree, but it's going to be a beautiful journey no matter what. And you are more than capable and more than resilient to go through all of this. Divine, the universe, God, goddess has your back. So... Thank you so much for um, being with me today. I hope this all resonates and I hope it makes you feel more comfortable about the changes happening and what's coming ahead. And I will see you next time. Bye.